My name is Kevin Winters, and we're in a series uh, talking about the voice of God, how to hear it and how to discern it. And one of the things I do in the beginning of every video, and I'm going to continue to do because it becomes more important to me every uh, every day that I uh, read through comments and different sites and, and run into people and discuss things with God about God, that y'all, you really need to find out what your Bible says. If you find out what your Bible says, then you'll know uh, what God is saying. And, and, and what I mean is you won't have certainty or confidence in hearing from God or either you're going to be moving in error because you don't know what God has said. And so I watch people in the comment sections of different places make comments, especially y'all on Sid Roth's site. Now, I agree that I don't like I don't agree with all of Sid's. Yeah, some some of them I don't know about the stuff they teach. But you know what I'm not going to do? I'm not going to voice my opinion about it, something that I haven't first studied or sought God about because they have can, can prove they're not just random. They're proving that they have scriptures for the things they say. Now, it's my job to take what they said, go back to God and research it. And then I can speak on it once I have heard from God. But y'all don't want to do that. People don't want to do that because they would rather... Uh, just say something and not know something. And I think it's important that if you're going to be clear in communicating God's voice, or if you're going to be clear in anything that you know what God has said, if you're going to know what God is saying. Now, today I want to deal with the subject of stillness because stillness is absolutely critical to your ability to hear from God. Some of y'all can't hear from God because y'all won't be still. And, 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 and stillness is not just an action, but it's also an attitude. And so uh, in Psalms 46, 10, it says, be still and know that I am God. And one of the things I want you to notice is that he says, you first have to be still before you can know. A lot of y'all want to know before you be still. And you have to learn how to be still, y'all. You have to learn how to develop an attitude of stillness. And what I mean is this, a lot of, the Bible says, let thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. A lot of people like for that to operate backwards. A lot of people would prefer for God to, a lot of people would prefer that to do something and then God bless it. But if you want God to bless it, you have to get into to a position of saying, I don't know. And when you don't know and you don't lack, let he who lacks wisdom ask of God. You can't get the wisdom from God. You can't get heaven's perspective until you first understand that you lack that wisdom. So that is an attitude, y'all, of stillness. That is an attitude of understanding that I don't know that God is smarter than me. The people who don't hear from God, the people who run ahead and do things and they think they're doing something, God of service and turn out to be doing nothing, are always the people who haven't sought God first. Because what we like to do is what we think God wants done and not what we know God wants done. And so you can't know, though, until you learn how to be still. You have to learn how to have an attitude of lack. You have to learn how to have an attitude of I don't know. I don't do anything without asking God. The housing scandal came along and a lot of people, in America at least, a lot of people ran after these housing houses and deals and all of these things. And they never asked God first. They assume that they know. They assume they leaned on their own knowledge. Lean not to your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge God and he'll direct your paths. Again, you don't get the direction of your paths till you learn how to lean. You have to learn how to depend on God. When you depend on God, you don't assume that you understand. You don't assume that you know. You don't bring any of your own resources to the table, but you allow God freedom in your life to speak to you in an area. And then what heaven says, you bring into the earth. But you can't bring heaven into the earth until you acknowledge that you have lack. So the first part of stillness is understanding my need for God's wisdom, my need for his voice. And so we move when he says move. Now, I'm not telling you to be crazy and go to the grocery store and be standing there trying to figure out, Lord, but shall I choose the cucumbers or the tomatoes? Uh, and I was at a point where I did actually do those kind of things. But I'm talking about giving God the place to speak. Uh, giving God the place to speak. If you give God the place to speak, 
then what you're going to find is that God will speak. So that stillness, having an attitude, but then stillness is also an action. Because if you can first understand the first part, if you can first understand that you don't know, if you can first accept that you lack wisdom, then it'll be easy for you not to respond to a situation and then find yourself uh, in trouble. Because you have to first embrace that I don't know. Like embracing that you don't know an answer will help you uh, not assume an answer and then uh, and, and rush into an action. So Jesus shows us a perfect example of stillness. Now, this I want to say this. One of the things y'all going to notice that I don't do, I don't do the comparison between uh, hearing voices from God, visions, and the New Age movement. Some people like to try to justify that Satan is a, uh, he copies things of God. Uh, I'm never going to do that. First of all, I don't have to justify the scriptures. I don't have to. Now, if, of course, if somebody is teaching something and they can't show it to you in the scriptures, then they should be trying to point out how they different from the New Age movement and all those things. But I'm not going to try to do that because I can show it to you in the scriptures, right? And when you can show it to the uh, people in the scriptures, if the scriptures have the place of authority, if the scriptures are from which you rest, then you don't have to justify anything. If you don't have to justify supernatural travel because we see God do that with Philip. We see God do that with uh, Elijah. Now, I don't know about doing it on your own, like some people are suggesting, but you can clearly see that God uses people in that way. And so I don't have to try to justify it and distinct make a distinction between that and, and the new age movement because the scriptures make that distinction for itself i can trust within the scriptures say i don't care about what anybody else says or does now and that's because i've learned how to be still and depend on god i depend on the scriptures i depend on his truth i depend on his value and i depend on god's voice and, and those things lead me to not move into an action now the, again the other part of stillness is Learning how to physically be still. Learning how to not move until you've heard from God. The other uh, part is learning how to steal your thoughts. Now, what I'm not going to tell you to do is, is uh, first of all, let me get rid of one lie. Some people have a belief that if your mind is quiet, then you're going to hear from Satan. Satan can speak to you when your mind is filled. And so he says, to Anna, uh, Peter says, Ananias, how has Satan filled your heart to speak to? I don't think they were meditating when they heard his voice. So don't buy into the lie that as long as I don't steal my mind, as long as I don't keep quiet, then I won't hear from God. I mean, hear from the enemy. He can speak. And I told y'all in all the other videos, first of all, he's most likely to speak when you're thinking. He's most likely to speak. The Bible says when you're tempted, you're tempted by your own sins, drawn away by your own lust. And we know that he is the tempter. And so he's the one tempting you. And he's working with the thoughts you already have. He's not working with empty minds, blank minds, or still minds. He speaks to you when your mind is active because that's the most likely time for you to make a rash decision. It's when you're all tense and you got a decision that you feel like you just got to make and your thoughts are going crazy. That's when he's going to speak to you because I told you he's going to sneak in through, to your, through your thoughts so that you don't recognize that it's him. Because if your mind was quiet, y'all, you would recognize the, recognize him the same way. If you grab this concept, you're going to recognize the voice of God. So, uh, and I'm not talking about an empty mind. I'm talking about a still mind. I'm talking about having still, quieting yourself down, quieting your thoughts. I told you, you have to look inward. Let your mind, uh, uh, Put your mind, set your mind on things above, not on things of the earth. When you have your mind on Jesus, when you have your mind fixed on him you, and bring your soul to a quiet rest, then you're going to realize that you can hear the voice of God. Now, y'all, I walk in this state. I don't have, see, that's why I'm, I'm teaching y'all things that I, I live out. I don't have raging thoughts. I don't have, uh, I got problems happening right now and I don't have any thoughts about it. I don't have any I, because I'm resting, I'm leaning on God, I'm depending on God, I'm, I'm, I've learned to depend on his wisdom. And so I can be still because I'm depending on his wisdom, I'm depending on his plan in heaven is going to work out for all things work together for my good. And understanding that allows me to rest, it allows me to uh, lean on his understanding and not my own. And so my mind is never racing with thoughts so that I can't hear. In fact, when it 
first started to happen, my mind became so still and so quiet that I felt like I was in a room by myself and I didn't even know how to react because I have been so used and some of you have always been so used to so much noise in your mind. Well, God doesn't want so much noise happening in your mind. He wants your mind to be still. He says, be still, be quiet, be okay, be at peace. Once you can be at peace, then you're going to begin to hear God's voice clearly. Y'all. And that takes you from this whisper to an audible voice. And you can discern it really clearly because it's not, you're not trying to separate your thoughts from God's thoughts because you have given him a place. You have learned how to lean and be still. And so, and Jesus shows us this when, and I have time to turn, but it, go to Luke, uh, Mark 4, 35 to 40, Jesus is in the midst of a storm and this happens, y'all. While he's in the midst of the storm, uh, uh, the boat is being tossed to and fro all around the water. And while it's being tossed to and fro all around the water, he's on the boat sleep and the disciples are panicking. Now, their thoughts are not at peace. They're both in the same storm. They're both in the same dilemma. And yet Jesus is at peace sleep. And hit, and the rest of them are acting all crazy and wild and trying to. So they finally wake Jesus up and say, what's wrong with you? Don't you care? Don't you care that we are about to perish? And Jesus gets up and says, why don't y'all, what's wrong with y'all? Why don't you have any faith? And so what I want you to see, though, is that they reacted to the situation. They were not leaning on God. They were not depending on God in that situation. They grabbed buckets and were trying to shut out the water out of the boat. They were trying to save their own lives. Jesus knew the storm was happening, but Jesus was at peace. See, and that's why I showed you that peace is twofold. He's resting. He's leaning. He's, he's, he knows that he's supposed to go to the other side, and so he's okay. He can go to sleep because God has said we're going to the other side. And so it allows him, when he's resting on God and he's still, he's allowed to rest. He's allowed to be okay with the situation. He can sleep in the situation. The other part is this. His mind was at rest. His mind was at rest would allow his body to be at rest. He didn't have the stress that they had because his mind was at rest. And the Bible says Jesus does nothing without hearing, without, uh, only does what he hears and see the father does. That's what he said, right? And then he gets up and rebuked the storm. So we know that if he got up and rebuked the storm, he rebuked it because he had heard or seen his father do it. And I believe that while he was sleeping, he was getting his instructions. While he was still, he was getting his instructions. While he was resting, while he was depending on God, while he was still, he was getting his instructions. And when he got his instructions, he was able to then react to the circumstances. And then everybody, what? Knew. So he was still. Then they knew that he was God. Then they knew the hand of God. Then they knew the power of God. But it only happens when we first learn to be still. So stillness is this, y'all. Stillness is learning how to depend on God. Learning how to get up every morning and go to prayer. Don't bring your own thoughts and ideas. And just sit quietly and wait. Ask God a question and listen. Wait for it. Ask him and talk to him about your circumstances and listen. Don't assume anything. Don't bring your, don't let your mind go all haywire with all kinds of crazy thoughts because that's the likely time when Satan is going to speak. He's not going to speak when it's quiet because you're going to hear him and he doesn't want to be recognized. He's going to speak when your mind is full of thoughts, not when your mind is quiet. When it's quiet, then God is going to speak because the Bible says be still and know. You won't know that it's God speaking to you until you're still because you won't be able to recognize him among all the crazy thoughts that are happening. So you need to allow your thoughts to settle down, be still, and then you're going to find the voice of God is right there.